Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the channel for today's video and today we're going to show you how to bleed your brakes on your dirt bike. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. As you guys can see here, we got our KLX 140RF that we're using as an example for today and we're going to show you how you can bleed your brakes on the bike. And today we're going to take you along and I'm going to show you some of the tips, some of the tricks, and some of the things you need to know if you're going to go ahead and do this yourself in your own shop. Now I just wanted to quickly throw in a couple little bonus tips of why your brakes might not be bleeding. Now the first reason might be that you don't have enough brake pads left and you've worn out the brake pads enough that when the pads are being squished out together and you're pushing it all the way with the fluid out in the caliper is that it can't actually reach the rotor because your brake pads are so worn out so you might be thinking you just need to bleed them more but in reality you just need to replace your brake pads now bonus tip number two of why you might think you need to bleed your brakes but you don't actually need to is that you've actually bent your rotor now this is exactly what i had happen to me and why i thought i need to bleed my brakes in the first place is it turns out i actually hit the, the front rotor on a rock and it ended up bending it a little bit and what happens there is when the rotor starts to spin and it spins past the brake pad it's going to hit the one brake pad with the bend section and it's going to push the pad out and away and sink the caliper back in so when you go to squeeze the brake next time it's got to push it all the way back out so instead of having it being super sensitive in the brakes right where it always has been you had to pull it a long way for it to actually actuate the brakes and that's going to be because you had a bent rotor so you might just need to replace the rotor itself on your disc brake now the third bonus tips and reason that you might think you need to bleed your disc brakes and in reality it might be a different issue is that you may have actually punctured or torn the brake line that goes to the front or rear brakes and that's letting air come in into the system so you could bleed that thing all dang day long and it's never going to be properly bled because you're going to constantly have air being sucked in through the little crack or from wherever it was torn at so go over and make sure you can check and visually see that there's no tears or cracks or rips or anything in any of the brake lines and you don't have any leakages that way because that'll introduce a huge air leak into your brake system creating sucky brakes the first thing we're going to want to do is come up to here and read on the top of your brake master cylinder and it's going to tell you exactly what kind of brake fluid you need to use as you can see this one says i need dot three or four brake fluid as you guys can see here we got ourselves some dot three this is going to work exactly perfectly for what we need now there's going to be a couple extra things that we're going to grab that are going to help us do this job now these next two items you don't have to absolutely have to do this job but they're going to make it way easier to tell when you're done and you've done it correctly so here we have just simply a water bottle as well as a just a clear little vent line here with a nozzle that's going to go inside of the brake bleeder now this nozzle is not anything special. It's literally just something that fit inside this rubber tube here. And you wanna make sure that the tube you're using is clear and that's important so that we'll be able to see the bubbles as we bleed the brakes. Now you don't necessarily need this little pointy end here, but this is just gonna make it easier to stick this inside the bleeder. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can just go ahead and take one of the lines and shove this over top of the actual bleeder. Now here is the bleeder that we're talking about and it sits underneath this cap and you've got a little nipple there. And then the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is come up to the handlebars and you're gonna to wanna to pop these two Phillips screws out right here. Be careful you do not strip these as it can be a total disaster if you do. Now something else you wanna take note of is our little window that we have here. And then right next to the window, we've got a little tiny marking line right there in the middle of it, right here. And that's gonna be the point that you do not wanna let the fluid go down below as you're trying to bleed it or you're gonna reintroduce air back into the system and you're gonna to have to re-bleed it all over again. So it's important to note that when you're bleeding it to make sure that the fluid does not get too low or you're going to let air back into the system. So we're just going to go ahead and start by removing these screws. Make sure you're really pushing down on the screwdriver to make sure you don't strip these and you don't need to tighten these guys up extremely tight when you're done with them either. So let's quickly pull these guys out. Now something else that we have to be careful of when we're removing this is underneath this cap when you gently lift it up, there's going to be a rubber seal here on the inside of this and this entire rubber seal it's important that we don't get it dirty we don't get it uh, messed up and that the edge here stays in a nice good condition and while you're in here you can also check the color of your fluid and as you guys can see this is a nice golden color exactly what you want now the reason we have to open this guy up is so we can fill this back up with fluid as we bleed the brakes so we're going ahead we're going to sit this guy to the side make sure this doesn't get dirty and that you don't tear up any of the rubber here and now we can hop over to the next step now as i said before we don't absolutely need this bottle and the line but a it's going to make this job a whole lot cleaner a lot less of a mess and it's going to be way easier to tell when we're actually done bleeding the brakes so all we're going to do we're going to come down to that front tire where our bleeder was set at we're going to sit our bottle down the ground now what i like to do is i like to take a little bit of tape 
And the only reason I use the tape is so the bottle does not fall over with all of your fluids inside of it and make a huge mess. So I just taped this around the spoke here of the rim and then this guy can't fall down and fall over and make a huge mess of brake fluid everywhere, which is never fun. So just do a really sloppy job, just throw it together like that. That ain't gonna fall over now. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this pointy end here and we're gonna stick it in the end of the bleeder like so and just give it a little press. And this one's nice because it even has a little O-ring. You can see halfway along the pointy nozzle right about there there's a little bit of like a bulge coming out and that's just what goes up against here and it's gonna seal that as you push it in now we're gonna take this extra end that's down here and we're just gonna go ahead and stick that down into the water bottle and then you won't have a mess now it is important that this tube is clear so we can see the fluid as it comes out as you guys can see here down at the bottom of the bleeder there is an 8 mil nut that we can go ahead and stick a wrench down onto and this is what we're gonna use to end up bleeding it so as we go to start the process what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna take the brake we're gonna push it a couple times and then while you're holding it and squeezing it nice and tight, you're gonna go down to the bleeder and you're gonna put that eight mil wrench down on the bleeder screw down below and you're gonna watch the fluid come out through the line. So go ahead, I'm gonna pump this up a couple times. I'll put you guys down on the tripod. Now it's important that before you crack open the bleeder that you're holding the brake lever squeezed in to create pressure throughout the system. So now that we're holding the brake lever with my right hand, I'm gonna crack this loose with my other hand tight and boom you can see the fluid come back out we're gonna go ahead squeeze the handlebar a couple more times bring up some pressure we're gonna hold the brake and we're gonna open it again and then close it squeeze it some more and what we're looking for is inside the line which you guys have noticed so far there's been no air bubbles coming out now what we're looking for is exactly that if you still have air bubbles coming out through the line that means there's still air inside the system of the brakes now as i said earlier it's important that we make sure we don't let the fluid get down too far and get below that minimum line mark on the brake reservoir Otherwise you're gonna suck air back in there as this lowers down as you bleed the brake. So it's important to make sure you guys keep this topped up with fluids. So we'll go ahead and we'll make sure to just add a little bit more of our brake fluid and keep it topped up as we bleed the brakes. So just fill it up like so. And then we're gonna go back down here. We're gonna pump up our handbrake a couple times. We're gonna go ahead and stick our eight mil back down on the bleeder nut. And we're gonna keep pressure up on the lever and we're gonna open the bleeder nut. Boom, and then once the the pressure on the handlebar has been released and your hand so we're going to do it again from another angle we're going to squeeze up the lever a bunch and you guys will notice when i open the bleeder the brake lever is going to go further back in the handlebar like this and then once it gets to the end of the throw and it's being sucked all the way backwards and it gets to the end of the throw that's when you want to take your screw that's when you want to take your wrench and close the bleeder back closed so you don't let air come in from that direction when you let go of the brake. Now we're gonna continue to just repeat that process over and over until we no longer see any air bubbles coming out the bleeder valve into our little rubber tube that we have. Once you've done that, we can go ahead, top up the rest of the fluid in the reservoir, put the cap back on and hit go out and hit the trails. So I hope you guys have learned today on how to bleed your brakes. If you guys have, make sure you go down below, click like, click subscribe for more videos because we got lots of bangers, lots of riding videos and awesome content coming for you. And I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.